Sup all, JC3 here, the baller of YouTube The General. Welcome to Topic Tackle. My take for today is on the college basketball super team that is being assembled for the upcoming season at Duke. When you put the top three prospects in the class of 2018 on one team, you are instantly the favorites to win it all. And although college basketball has somewhat become the last stop, play well, don't get injured place before the NBA, you just hope RJ Barrett, Cam Reddish, and Zion Williamson will care enough to win during their one year at Duke. Before I get into today's video, here's a reminder to check out my past couple videos and hit the thumbs up button on this video for more Topic Tackle in the future, and to leave your feedback in the comments down below because I'm always down there reading what you have to say. With Zion Williamson's announcement on Saturday night that he was committing to Duke, a big three was created. Plus, they have point guard Trey Jones, the eighth ranked player in the class. I don't want to leave him out. We haven't seen an assembly of talent this good in terms of ranking on a team since 2014-15 Kentucky, nine of those players went on to make NBA rosters and almost went undefeated. You know what happened, they lost in the final four to Wisconsin. So how do I present this? Well, here's a fact. A lot of people like to hate on greatness and most apparent sustained greatness. Why do so many people hate the Patriots, now the Warriors, for even longer than those two teams, Duke basketball? One exception would be the Spurs and it's simply because many perceive them as boring still, so why waste your energy? From Leitner to Reddick to Grayson Allen, the raw fact is you sign up for Duke basketball and you hit clutch shots, you're signing up for a lot of people to turn against you. And that's just how it's been and I don't expect anything to change with these three guys coming in next year. So. If you're one of those people who have an anti-Duke bias, do your best to push it aside for the next couple minutes because what I want everyone watching to realize today is the amazing talent that is assembling for one team that will be playing together on the same court most likely for one season only. This is the way basketball is now at all levels. Hello? AAU teams loaded with top talent playing in Nike and Adidas showcase tournaments going up against other teams loaded with talent? College teams loaded with top recruits aiming to play with the best and win because I know we're all watching Trey Young drop 48 points against an unraked Oklahoma State team and still lose LeBron leaves Cleveland to join two other stars. KD leaves OKC to join three other stars. Paul George and Melo get traded to join Westbrook. Chris Paul traded to join James Harden. Super teams are here and here to stay for a while. And this college basketball team is going to be a super team. RJ Barrett from Canada is a 6'7 wing that can handle the ball and with his left-handed release is even harder to guard. Hey man, Durant said it. Okay, crafty with the left. See, lefties are tough to guard, man. Because they can go right a little better. He can play on and off the ball and has a consistent jump shot. Combine that with his explosive ability and leadership qualities that propelled Team Canada over Team USA in the under-19 FIBA World Championship Tournament this past summer, you have yourself the number one player in 2019. Oh wait, the dude also reclassified to 2018 and is still number one. Cam Reddish, another 6'7 wing, ranked number two in the 2018 class. Ball is life has called him the walking bucket. Sorry, Mike Beasley. And Paul George in high school. He's able to bang down low and step out for three. He possesses the ability to create his own shot and because of that, opportunity for others open up. I see him as the main scoring threat for Duke. And finally, Zion Williams in third ranked 2018 class he does this stuff super athletic lebron like athleticism at the high school level and is doing it on a team not loaded with top talent so when he goes to duke and gets to play alongside barrett and reddish i believe his game will improve with two other big threats on his team he'll get easier attempts and won't have to drive the ball to the basket creating nearly every play for himself anymore the main concern with him though is that now in high school he's physically bigger than a lot of his opponents if college teams just pack the paint a lot of his offense will be eliminated so he needs to develop a consistent jump shot and play hard man-to-man -man defense to create fast break opportunities for himself if these three guys plus Trey Jones can figure out how to play together and they care about winning instead of just getting to the NBA I believe we are looking at dominance and the potential 2019 national championship so let me know what you think in the comments down below will Duke win the national championship in 2019 remember to subscribe like and leave your feedback in the comments down below and we'll be back with more topic tackle soon JC3 out